Hello everyone and welcome to my video presentation. As you know, my name is Marta White and I am here excited to present my presentation about cultural diversity and the ethnic group that I chose is Sri Lanka. So before I give you some background about Sri Lanka, I would like to, um, to say a brief introduction. Um, there is only one race, the human race. Ethnicity is a sharing of a common history. Where you come from, language, origin, religion, or identity. Culture is what makes an individual unique. The different values and beliefs. The traditional music and dance. As a support worker, we will care and work with people from different backgrounds, beliefs, and customs. This is called diversity. Canada is a multicultural country. You can see different physical features and hear different languages and accents. As a support worker, you should have the ability to interact with people from different cultures in a respectful and sensitive manner. Every person is unique. To accept people of different cultures, we need to learn about them from them. I personally have two friends from Sri Lanka and I chose their ethnicity to know more about them and their culture. So to tell you a little bit about Sri Lanka, it means resplendent island, also known as Salami. It is an island country in South Asia. And just as a quick reference, I have an atlas. So here, this is the Asian country, I mean the Asian continent. Uh, this is India, as you can see, a big country, and Sri Lanka is right here, um, the island country in the Indian Ocean, just for you as a reference. Um, so, because of this geographic location, the race can be referred as South Asian. The landscape is diverse, from rainforest to, to tea plantations, and to Buddhist architecture, to modern city. Sri Lanka is a population of about 21.67 million people, about the population of New York. The three largest ethnic groups are the Sinhalese, Tamil, and Muslim. Combined, they make up, they make up more than 99% of the country's population. Sinhalese people constitute about 75% of the Sri Lankan population, this is about 16.2 million, making it the largest minority group. Sinhala means lions and are also known as Hela. And also as a quick reference, this is the Sri Lankan flag, which means the lion flag or the Sinha black flag. In Canada 2011 census, 7,220 people identified themselves as Sinhalese ancestry, out of just under 140,000 Sri Lankans. The main characteristics of the, of the ethnic groups are language and religion. Sri Lankans identify themselves based on their ethnicity, family, or religion. They do not have conflict between religions. In fact, they interact peacefully with each other. And because of this fact, I have decided to um, not to choose just one single, one singular ethnic group. I'm going to talk about uh, the whole Sri Lanka as an ethnic group. So some of the health practices in Sri Lanka are the Ayurvedic practices, the Buddhist chantis or known as Parida, Buddhist temple, and they also have universal healthcare. In the early days, Sri Lankans had at least one chief medical personnel called Weda Mahataya, which means doctor. These health practices were passed on by her inheritance. Sinhalese medicine relates to Ayurvedic uh, practices. Some examples are healthy lifestyle, yoga, or verbal medicine. Both health, um, I'm sorry, 
Compared to some treatments such as Buddhist chantis or Parida, both health practices combined are more effective. Parida is a Buddhist practice which means protection. Sri Lanka's people believe that by rejecting certain verses and scriptures will avoid misfortune or danger. In modern days, Sri Lankan people are covered by a universal healthcare insurance free of cost. Private clinics are also available, but they are usually expensive. Sri Lankans trust their healthcare system and do not hesitate to go to hospital if they need to, even for a small fever. Regardless of their beliefs or religion, Sri Lankans practice the use of modern medical care as well as more traditional healthcare such as herbal remedies or go to the Buddhist temple for remedies that increase their immune system and promote their physical and mental health. So now I'm going to talk about culture and religion in Sri Lanka. So the three main faiths are the Buddhist, Hindu, and Muslim. Religion and language are key in the identity of the people. Buddhist is the main faith in Sri Lanka. It does not acknowledge a supreme God, but it focuses on an inner peace and wisdom. Buddhism is more a way of life in which people believe in reincarnation and also in karma. So reincarnation is the continuous cycle of birth and karma is the principle of cause and effect. Sri Lankan culture and social life is rich in tradition that are influenced by their faith. The three official languages are, as you can see, Sinhala, Tamil, and English. So this means Sinhala. Artistic traditions include music, dance, and visual arts. Festivals and holidays are celebrated throughout the year. People use elephants and decorate them for their festivals. So as you can see, I assume the elephant was the national animal in Sri Lanka, but I was wrong. So after I did my research, in fact, Sri Lanka doesn't have one specific uh, national animal. So, so this is an example of why we should do some research and do not assume things. Um, but in fact, the elephant has a special place in Sri Lanka's culture and religion. Like other cultures in the world, Sri Lankans eat with a finger pin, finger, um, fingertips. So I'm gonna show you really quick. So basically this is what they do. So they just grab the food like this and put it in their mouth. So that's very interesting. <laughs> so, uh, Sri Lankans have a national dish, which is the rice and curry. They also have the traditional drink, which is the tea. And Sri Lankans like to offer tea anytime they have a guest. Uh, the traditional dress is the sari for both men and women, and even children wear the sari. So what I'm wearing right now is a traditional sari, and basically is not a dress is just a piece of fabric probably about seven to nine meters long which is really really long and you just uh, wrap it up around your body so I had a little bit hard time to, to do it but I was able to improvise so um, this is an example of the sari in children these are two girls Sri Lankan girls and they look very cute sari is not just for women it's also for men and this is a very traditional casual sari. So men can wear this pretty much every day. So Sri Lanka also has the traditional flower, which is the blue water lily. And it's a symbol of truth, purity, and discipline. So this is what water lily looks like, something similar. It's kind of uh, blue, uh, purple color with 
um, yellow in the middle. It reminds me like a sunflower, but of course just uh, more bluish. So now I would like to explain to you how religion and culture affect the care for the aging. Sri Lankan, Sri Lankan people take pride in the care for the elderly. It is a custom, a tradition, it is how they grow up. But more than that, the love they have for their elderly parents is the biggest reason they want to care for them in a home-based environment. Most of the care given is carried out by the family members. Sri Lankan people see it as a blessing. It is a desire to provide care for their loved ones with compassion and love. They have a vision of a sense of belonging, responsibility, duty, a voluntary act, and a role model. Religion also plays a role in the care for the elderly. They attend the Buddhist temple because they believe that it can improve their immune system and promote their whole well-being. Spirituality is also very important in the life of the Sri Lankan people. So now I would like to um, talk about the roles of the family and how they care for the person with dementia. The Sri Lankan tradition is that the youngest son will inherit the parents' house. He and his wife will live with his parents and his wife is expected to look after the elderly parents. However, this arrangement is not necessarily a rule because time and circumstances have changed. And the reality is that whoever in the family is able to provide care for the elderly parents, they will do it by supporting each other and each family member. Sri Lankan people are very involved and devoted in the care of the elderly. Not just one, but many family members come together as a whole in terms of decision making. Their devotion in the care for the elderly is genuine and in some circumstances they may not even realize that their loved one has developed a form of dementia. So as we know providing care for somebody with dementia is it's difficult so if the people providing the care doesn't know why their loved ones are acting in a certain way it can bring even more frustrations and it's it's kind of sad. So but regardless of the circumstances I have learned that Sri Lankans are truly commitment in the care for their loved ones, no matter what. The prevalence of dementia in Sri Lanka is about 3.8% according to the Dementia Research UK website. The countries with the highest income have the higher rates of dementia compared with low income countries which have the lower rates of dementia among their population. So now, so I have some quotations from caregivers here. So I'm going to tell you something about the view held in the aging in Sri Lankan people. And the Institute for Research and Development, uh, they did this research about the views and experiences from informal caregivers in Sri Lanka. So I'm going to read to you their quotations. After all, he is my father. I will take care of him until the last moment. This is a son, 48 years old, the main caregiver. Whatever it is, I will do it for my father. This is my duty as a daughter. Uh, this is a lady, 38 years old, the main caregiver. My father still remembers his conscious death. I will place him in a care home if I have no other way. I told my sister, I will look after him, let him stay with me. So this is a daughter, 52 years old, the main caregiver. Looking after someone is like an act of merit. God also gives the best in return when you do good to others. So this is a daughter, 56 years old, main caregiver. So this testimony, from caregivers reflects their honest views and feelings about caring for their loved ones. I had the opportunity to interview my friend from Sri Lanka who lives here in Fort St. John. I asked her what she could do if she had to look after her 
her parents with dementia here in Canada. And this is what she said. I would definitely look after my parents at home. I will do it as much as I can. I will quit my job and I and my husband, we have to work on two jobs. He will understand because this is how we grow up. We send money to my parents in Sri Lanka. We bought a house for them so they can live more comfortably. So her response is a reflection of what you just heard uh, from this quotation from caregivers, which I was not surprised, but the fact that she responded to me directly with no hesitation, without even thinking, I was amazed by her response. So she knew exactly what she would do and she just said that to me. She also shared with me an experience. Uh, she, she had had grandma who suffered dementia and she said that between her and many other family members, take care to look after her grandma. It was very, very sad and it was difficult because she would go uh, in the middle of the night out and put herself in danger. So, so um, yeah, she said that while they provided care for her, nobody complained. They helped each other and they were just happy to be able to do it for her. So just um, the end of my presentation, I would like to say a, a brief conclusion. So culture is what makes an individual unique and the sharing of common background, values and beliefs. Each of us have different characteristics from personal values to physical and mental health status, among other things. Let's take a moment to learn from ourselves and the other person culture and this has an influence on health behavior and making choices. The best way to understand and accept the person's culture is by learning about them and from them. Do not assume that people from other specific cultures are all alike because not all individuals follow the same beliefs. As healthcare assistants, we must respect and accept the client's belief. Hair care assistants do not have to agree on, the, on, the, on their beliefs, but we must be respectful and non-judgmental. By doing so, hair care assistants can make a difference in the well-being of the person and make them feel valuable human beings by who they are. So this is the end of my pre presentation. Um, I just want to thank you for your, for your attention and let you know that I really enjoyed this, this assignment, this research, and it gave me the opportunity to learn a little bit more about my friend and her culture. Thank you. See you later.